Investigated for anything. I'm investigated all the time. They say it was her campaign that forced them to do that. So certainly that should be investigated. That sounds like you missed Joe Biden. No, I think Joe Biden was I'm not a fan of Joe Biden. And I think he might be might have done better than her. I mean, if you take a look at the polls now, I mean, I can't tell you exactly, but it looks like I'm winning and winning pretty easily. But we'll see. You have to get out the vote. But no, I think what they did to Joe Biden was a threat to democracy. This made being a fan of you much harder and you decided to do this in the week of relentless attacks against you. The optics are undeniably bad. Brother, why did you do that? I can imagine a state of mind that you must be in to actually shave your beard. How am I supposed to treat your nuanced analysis seriously when it comes from a baby face? How am I supposed to use your content as an alternative for right-leaning framing of global issues? This made, me, this made being a fan of you much harder, and you decided to do this during a week of relentless attacks against you. The optics are undeniably bad. Everyone needs to calm down, okay? My beard grows back in literally two days. And yes, I shaved because I needed to look more white. Okay, I'm getting a lot of relentless attacks as an Islamist fundamentalist extremist. All this shit. I had to be white for a little bit, okay? I'm not trying to get banned out here. <laughs> I'm doing white face. Chrissy, you know, to use their term, he had 14 million votes. They went into his office. He had a debate with me. He didn't do well. His poll numbers went down. And that's okay. That can happen. <sighs> and they went in and they said, you're not running anymore. We're taking it away from you. They took away the presidency of the United States. I don't even like using the word coup because a lot of people don't exactly understand what a coup is. Uh, they took away. But nobody they ran told against him, the vice president. Excuse me. That's they took away the presidency and they handed it there. Well, nobody ran because the whole establishment did it. It did it as a whole. The Democrat Party did. When you saw that, you've never seen anything like that. He won the I mean, she was in the primary. You know, she was one of like 22 people. There were a lot of people. Last time, yeah. She was the first one to Drop out. get out because yeah. she did so badly. All of a sudden, she's running. So I'm not saying from my standpoint. I'm saying from his standpoint. He's a very angry man. In fact, I think he probably likes me more than he likes her. But he's a very angry man right Let now. Let me ask you about Joe Scarborough because on Bill Maher's show, he said his people, meaning your people, have said they're going to arrest my producers. Oh, nobody said that. Look, Joe's a uh, sick puppy. I know him well. <laughs> He's a sick puppy. Nobody's going to do that. He's literally talking. This conversation started with him straight up saying that he is going to revoke the licenses of television networks that he perceives as biased against him. Okay. Now, yes, Joe Scarborough is exaggerating. Why the fuck would they ever? Why would they ever arrest Joe Scarborough or his producers? Joe Scarborough is incredibly fucking conservative. Joe Scarborough, ironically, is one of the last fucking people that would be arrested in a situation like this. Unless I was president. Where I definitely would arrest them. Uh, I used him used beautifully. I, well, I dropped him because I thought he was... Uh very unethical, actually, but I dropped him. But I used him for 2016, and I do it from my apartment. I wouldn't even have to go in. I'd do phone calls, and I did them almost sometimes on a daily basis. Why do you say that? And then everyone said, because I watch him and what he says about me. What he says is so bad. And you have to understand, no, I was friendly with him and with Mika, 
But at a certain point, and it, it doesn't matter why, but I, I didn't want to do it anymore with them. And uh, they're not too happy about it. No, but he says, he says a lot of things like that. that I think they're unethical, but who knows? I want to drill down on this question of retribution because against your political opponents, because yeah. you've uh, had opportunities to walk that back. And my question is this, are you prepared to say now that you will not use law enforcement to punish or prosecute? Trump is such a pussy, dude. He literally said he was going to lock Hillary Clinton up and then never did. <clears throat> and even now he's just like lying about how he's like, oh, I never even did lawfare against Hillary Clinton. It's like, yeah. You were a bitch for that. Like, that's why I voted for you illegally, dude. What the fuck? You're a bitch for that, for real. Dumbass. Kid, your political opponents. Excuse me. That's what they're using on me. Okay, so your well, stance is that they before started you, Before you start the talk, yeah, I got Howie, it. that's what they're using on me. I've got DAs. I've got... Uh, Everybody, they look at me. I, it, there's never been anything like this. The biggest case was the one down in Florida, and I beat it 100%. I won the case because we had, a, a, a number one, a brilliant judge and a judge that moved rather rapidly, and I won the case. By the way, Biden had almost the same case, but he didn't have the Presidential Records Act record, because yeah. he wasn't the president. Just to finish. And he got off on the basis that he's incompetent to say he didn't, you know, by the way, that he's incompetent. And it was a strange ruling because they said, number one, he's incompetent, so he's not going to be. Good. But he was the prosecutor actually said he's guilty, but he's incompetent. But they didn't say he couldn't be president anymore. That was his bigger problem for not being president. How can you not represent you yourself in court because you're incompetent, but you're allowed to represent the United States of America? The whole thing is crazy. But no, they have weaponized government against me. But and are you use it, willing to use the same tactics? No, I don't want to do that, that because that's a bad thing for the country. I don't want to do that. I don't know who said. I haven't said that I would, but they have done it. I've got this motherfucker verbatim said, "We have enemies amongst our ranks, the left, and that they need to be dealt with. Maybe the National Guard." Maybe federal law enforcement or maybe just the police, but they have to be dealt with the enemy within our gates, the enemy within. That is <clears throat> like I paraphrase it a little bit, but almost verbatim. OK. Like that wasn't like he said that. It's like. What the fuck do you mean? Now he's like, oh, I didn't say it. I don't know where it's coming from. And it's like, no, you did, actually. Another straight Hitlerian moment for him, by the way. Yeah. Trump urges using military to handle radical left lunatics on election day. Are you expecting chaos on election day? No, I don't think it's not from the. Well, it's not even this one. This is the votes wait, for Trump. Oh, it is. But I'm just wondering if these outside agitators will start up on election day. Let's say you win. I mean, let's not let's let's remember you've got 50,000 Chinese nationals in this country in the last couple of years. Yeah. You have people on the terrorist watch list, 350 in the last couple of years. You've got, uh, like you said, 13,000 murderers and 15,000 rapists. Right. Um, what are you expecting? Joe Biden said he doesn't think it's going to be a peaceful election day. Well, he doesn't have any idea what's happening in all fairness. He spends most of his day sleeping. Uh, I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within, not even the people that have come in and destroying our country. By the way, totally destroying our country. The towns, the villages, they're being inundated. But I don't think they're the problem in terms of election day. I think the bigger problem are the people from within. We have some very bad people. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. And I think they're the big, and, and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by National Guard, or if really necessary, by the military, uh, they, because they can't let that happen. I love you more, but I love That's it, bro. Fuck you mean, verbatim.
verbatim. He said, I'm going to stick the military on the left. <clears throat> and now he's like, I don't know where that came from. Who said it? I don't know. Must have been a handsome guy, whoever said it. Not me, but another handsome man. You might think it's me because he's so handsome when he said those words, but it wasn't me. He, Attorney General's DAs, they're all... Right. You take a look at... You take a look in Atlanta you're, you're with, have, you're heavily with investigated. Fannie. Yeah. They with went Fannie and Willis. met with them. It's all coming out of the Justice Department. They have done something never done in this country before. Now, it's been done in a lot of other countries, third world countries, banana republics, but never done. So when you ask that question, you really have to start by saying, well, they've done it to you. No, I'm not looking to do it to them at all, because that is a really — they have set a very bad precedent, however. You talk about the enemy within. There's enemies — America's enemies yeah. outside. Uh, the enemy within is a pretty ominous phrase if you're talking about other Americans. I think it's accurate. I mean, I think it's accurate. Who are you talking about? Uh, and, the enemy? you know, I heard that. They said, oh, the enemy. On the outside, you have Russia, you have China, you have a lot of different groups. If you have a smart president, they can be easily handled. I handled them. We had no wars. I had no — we had no wars. The only thing I had was ISIS, and I defeated them in, like, record time. They were gone. But I started no wars. The outside people, the so-called enemies, if they're enemies, and they might not be enemies, mm -hmm. if you have a smart president, they can be handled. But when you have people investigating my campaign, when you have people — you know, they spied on my campaign now. You understand that. That's been proven. But they spy on your campaign. The Russia, Russia, Russia hoax was, was all made up, and now it's acknowledged that it was made up. All of these different things. You have the 51 different agents saying it was from Russia, and now they all say it wasn't from Russia. Okay, mm -hmm. so we were lying. All, uh, many other things, many, many. I could go order. You just don't have enough time. But what they've done is so terrible. Who's ever heard of anything like this? Adam Shifty Schiff, he's a crooked guy. He's a crooked politician, 100 percent. And he's going to be a senator now. Can you believe it? Uh, but again, no, he's no, a political opponent of yours, he's not, he's no, an no, enemy. No, he's a... Well, he is, of course, he's an enemy. He's an enemy. He wanted to put my son in jail, and my son didn't even know what he was talking about. He wanted to put my son in jail on a scam that he made up called Russia, Russia, Russia. He, Hillary Clinton, and a group of people made up a scam. And they came out of a room, and they said, Donald Trump Jr. will be going to jail over this. And my son called me and said, what did I not Donald Trump Jr. Oh, man. That's my favorite of the Trump children. <clears throat> I do. He knew nothing about Russia. It had nothing to do with him. Think of how bad you have to be when you say you're going to put any son, not just, a, you know, a president's son, but any son. You're going to put somebody in jail on a scam that you knew was made up by you. That's an enemy from within. That's really it, that is a threat to democracy. These are bad people. We have a lot of bad people, but when you look at Shifty Schiff and some of the others, uh, yeah, they are to me the enemy from within. I think Nancy Pelosi is an enemy from within. Uh, she lied. She was supposed to protect the Capitol. She said that to her daughter just recently. It was found on the tape from her daughter, who's a, a documentary maker. Uh, she said, this is my responsibility. She admitted it. But I offered her 10,000 National Guard troop, right, anything she wanted. No, but she didn't take them. She should have taken them. And you wouldn't have had, Jan you know, you wouldn't have had. Protect the Capitol from what? This is the funniest argument because there is nothing consistent. Like, you cannot... It just straight up doesn't make sense. Why would the cap why would the capital need protection if it was a peace loving day? A day of love. It doesn't make sense. January 6th, as we know it, uh, 
Well, just six See, by the way, if she took 500 people, you wouldn't have had it, you know, let alone 10,000. Sure. So let me, you actually give me a segue into my next question. I do have to say for the record that the spying accusation is in dispute. I know you don't believe what, that. What accusation? The spying accusation. But I, I don't, don't think it's in. Um, what's the deal with the Russia stuff? Yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of different parts of this Russia shit. But yes, Russia absolutely tapped in to the Trump campaign. And the Trump campaign was dumb enough to not only collaborate, uh, but also quite literally do it openly. Um, specifically, what was it? Was it uh, Mike Papadopoulos or whatever? Who like bragged about it too. He was like, yo, dude, a bunch of Russian people like said that they have dirt on my fucking on. on Hello, I am <clears throat> Mike Slopadopoulos. Or whatever the fuck the guy's name was. Not George Slopadopoulos. No, it's not Paul Manafort. It was the the fucking, the guy with the Greek last name. Anyway, he just straight up was like, what was his, what was the dude's name? He was like a low level guy on the campaign, but he was stupid enough. Okay. Not a single person has actually said the name correctly. Oh, it was George Papadopoulos. Okay, so that last name wasn't incorrect. All right, so George Papadopoulos is caught talking to, uh, at a bar, to like a bunch of Australian nationals, flexing on them, saying, I have dirt on the fucking Clinton campaign that like a bunch of Russians gave me. That was like the red flag that understandably caused the intelligence agencies to go, what the fuck do you mean? So they conducted an investigation to see if Russia was actually trying to directly work with the Trump campaign. They found plenty of evidence that, yes, in that process, there were a lot of foreign nationals that were absolutely trying to collaborate with the Trump campaign. Ultimately, um, the way, like the most significant aspects of this collusion did not even occur directly with a relationship with the Trump campaign and Russia. It happened with like, uh, you know, dumbass Facebook ads that uh, they took out or uh, fake groups that they created. Like, not a lot of money spent in that direction. And it wasn't as consequential as the way the media presented it as. But it doesn't matter. And ultimately, <clears throat> ultimately, it uh, it was, you know, silly shit that the uh, American liberals greatly exaggerated in an effort to say, oh, Russia is the reason why Hillary Clinton lost and uh, and that like Russia's in the pocket for Trump and that Trump is having gay sex with Vladimir Putin over and over again. They literally pointed to fucking Russia and Russian involvement for every damn thing. A lot of liberals lost their minds. A lot of blue and on lost their fucking minds in that process. The irony, of course, is that Israel was doing a shit ton more than Russia ever could even dare to dream in terms of uh, election interference. But that's neither here nor there. Um, the thing is... It was just found out that it was a much bigger deal than previously known, though, bro. No matter how big of a deal it is, it wasn't to the same degree or nowhere near the same severity. Come on, dude. Every single thing that Donald Trump did, Rachel Maddow would go on television and be like, it's because of Russia. Like, that's crazy. They were like, oh, Trump won because of Russia. No, it was a way to abdicate responsibility away from the fucking dog shit campaign that Hillary Clinton ran. And the dog shit decisions that the DNC made in terms of putting up a very fucking unpopular, like overwhelmingly unpopular uh, presidential candidate. If you are, if you are the most powerful nation on the planet, if you're the most powerful nation on the planet, and your democracy is so fickle that it could be undermined by like a couple million dollars of ad campaigns 
that is like hyper targeted towards some of the silliest fucking supporters of Donald Trump out there, then we do not have a democracy at all. We have the most fragile fucking nation on the planet. If Hillary Clinton ran a normal campaign, this marginal change in the attitudes in certain swing states would not even be effective. Now, <clears throat> the other part of the problem is that Kamala Harris is kind of doing a repeat of this right now uh, in terms of like running to the middle as hard as possible and just kind of, I don't know, presenting herself as like someone who is very close to Joe Biden when Americans are like, I hate Joe Biden. We were excited that you're not Joe Biden. Uh, the most Most consequential aspect, in my opinion, like the most singular consequential aspect also did not come from Russia. It came from fucking James Comey. When he reopened the Hillary Clinton investigation with that letter three days before the election, it was one of the most insane things I've ever seen. And the funniest part about it is liberals considered him to be a hero after the fact. He just dog fucked them. Okay. It was insane. That was straight up more consequential for the election than anything else. Shake it the f What is this? Watch a chicken rant? Fuck up. Uh, and then I'm going to let it marinate. Usually I let it marinate for like at least an hour. I like to let it sit in its own juices. Get the, uh, get the marinade and the spices acquainted with the chicken. Right? You know? Let it, uh, let it have time to... To get to know one another and ask each other if they're going to vote for Joe Biden after years and years and years of Democratic incompetence. Like, are they still going to fucking let go of all their principles and vote for Joe Biden? Why? Because obviously there's no third party alternative. What the fuck am I going to do? Vote for Howie, he Howie Hughes or Gloria Riva at the PSL? Obviously not. That's just that's literally throwing your vote away and giving a false sense of hope to some random crank. Usually, oh, I know a lot of tankies are going to get mad at me, but I'm still talking about the chicken and the experience that the chicken is having with the fucking sauce that I'm mixing the chicken with. OK, the chicken and the sauce get acquainted and they learn about each other's politics. And before you know it, the, ch the sauce is radicalizing the chicken and the chicken is feeling like you know maybe medicare for all could happen maybe medicare for all could happen why can't we have medicare for all i mean all these other comparable nations all these other oecd nations have medicare for all right that's what the chicken is saying to the sauce when they get acquainted with one another in the fucking fridge anyway um so yeah you take the uh you take the cap off put it right on there neatly make sure that it's airtight and then put it right in the fridge Shake it the fuck. <sighs> My guy, so many other meats out there, so many tasty meats. Yeah, except this is the most like high protein one. In dispute, Obama and Biden spied on my campaign. It's not, it was a long time ago. We're talking about the previous campaign. Maybe they're doing this campaign too, but so far it doesn't seem to be working. We were using boom bikes at his request. Just to clarify, 60 Minutes showed a promo clip of Vice President Harris giving one answer to a question on another show and then broadcast a different answer to the same question. Nancy Pelosi says she never received a National Guard offer from Trump on January 6th, though he was involved in some National Guard. This is so cowardly. The New York Times does this shit, too. It's like, bro, bring that up in the conversation. The New York Times did this with the interview that they conducted with J.D. Vance, where they just like spent the last 10 minutes being like, here's all of the things that J.D. Vance just straight up lied to our face about. And it's like, dog, your job is to literally address it in the moment. Like, it's so annoying. Like, the reason why they do this is so that they don't get, like, in trouble, I guess, but. Our discussions in earlier days. When we come back, Donald Trump on the January 6th. Jesus, take the wheel. Would you ever have Quinlan Blackwell on stream? I may or may not be her commenting this right now, lol. Okay, I don't think you are her because I have asked her to come on stream. Problem is, I need, like, a... Uh, 
fucking long ass time frame. Like I need to, I need to get it ready ahead of time because she's always, she always is, is like taking time off on the weekend, stuff like that. So yeah. Fixed and harsh criticism from two former generals he fired. And later, Brett Baer on his interview with Kamala Harris. Hey, it's Will Kane. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News. Early in-person voting. All right, let's look at Steve Kernacki, the khaki. Uh, Trump is doing a town hall again. Yeah, I'm probably not going to watch that. I might, wa I might go dive into SNL and then the Quinn video. It began Saturday. 